Aloha, everybody. I recently wrote a blog about how I think organizations can not only survive, but actually thrive during a recession. And that the recession provides a catalyst, an incentive for organizations to not only make their data work harder, but make their data work smarter. So let me share with you seven things that I think any organization of any size and in any industry can do today to immediately start getting value from their data, to make their data work harder, make it work smarter, so that organizations can thrive during a recession. Action number one, or this playbook number one, is that organizations need to align around use cases and clearly defining across the different stakeholders the ideal outcomes that you want from those use cases and the KPIs and metrics against which you're gonna measure the effectiveness of those use cases. You need to drive organizational alignment to identify, validate value and prioritize the use cases that organizations have because organizations don't fail from a lack of use cases, they fail because they have too many. Caution here, as you look at the use cases and moving forward on a use cases, do not get caught up in the tyranny of precision. Yes, Mark, that's a call out to you. That is a 2% improvement on a use case over a four to six month period is much, much better. I'm gonna say infinitely better than a 10% improvement over in 10 and two years. The reason why I say that is you wanna take your money fast, but there's no reason why you can't do 2% in four to six months and still thrive to get the 10% in two years. Don't, you don't need to play the long game here. You just need to put in place a process on a use case by use case basis to iterate and apply and gain organizational alignment. Number two, prioritize those use cases that share common data sets. Let me give you an example. In retail and entertainment, point of sales plus customer loyalty plus inventory, those three data sets together help me to optimize my merchandising, my sales, my pricing, my marketing, my inventory, and my store management effectiveness. In manufacturing and oil and gas, if I can bring, bring together machine telemetry data with service records, with technician notes, I can reduce unplanned downtime, I can reduce my um, inventory expenses and logistics costs, I can reduce rework, I can reduce returns, I can improve operational efficiencies. So the one way to cheat in this process is to identify use cases that share common data sets. Number three, empower the front lines of your organization. Yes. I'm gonna recommend that you teach everybody to think like a data scientist, because you want to empower everybody in the organization to identify and ideate where and how data and analytics can drive new sources of value to the organization. And the people who are gonna have the best ideas of where and how to apply data and analytics, especially in the short term, are the people who are either engaging with customers or who are managing the operations of the business. Yes, those frontline employees need to be empowered because while data may be the most valuable asset in the world, I'm gonna argue that employees are a close number two because they're critical for identifying and ideate where and how you can apply data. You're gonna find that empowering your employees is critical for doing the feature engineering that allows you to build better models. So empower your employees and merge those employee, empowered employees with your data to get things done, not only harder, but smarter, right? Number three, Embrace nanoeconomics to drive this precision decisions on your use cases, right? Stop making decisions based on averages. If you make decisions based on average, at best, you are going to get average results. So you want to be able to make decisions based on predicted propensities at the individualized level. That means you're going to have to learn a little bit about nanoeconomics. It's a very simple concept. It's the concept of individualized human or device predicted behavioral and performance propensities. That is what, is, is what it is they're likely to do next at some level of confidence. And that means you're going to have to build up analytic profiles to house all those predicted propensities that you're going to use to drive precision decisions that optimize the use cases you identified in play number one and play number two. Play number five build reusable data and analytic assets. Exploit the economics of data and analytics through reuse and sharing of assets. You can build data 
and reuse data across an unlimited number of use cases as long as you can share it. Yes, data silos are the enemy here. You wanna be able to figure out how do I connect to where that data is? How do I virtually get at that data so that I can bring together that data and use it and exploit the unique economic characteristics of data? But I also can leverage AI and ML to build data and analytic assets that actually appreciate in value, not depreciate the more that they're used. That is the more that you use these data and analytic assets across more use cases, the more relevant, the more accurate, the more timely these assets become. And that's gonna eventually lead you down the path to data products. Building data products to deliver specific, well-defined business and operational outcomes that tie back to the use cases you identified in place one and play two. Play number six is to build out your analytic and data capabilities use case by use case. Avoid the big bang approach. Hey, you ain't got no time for green bananas in a recession. You don't have time to spend two years waiting for to build out your, your big architecture because in two years, you're, we may be out of the recession. You may have missed the opportunity. Yes, this is an opportunity on a use case by use case basis to build out your, your data and analytics capabilities on a use case by use case basis where each use case pays for itself. It is like printing money. Right, so, so take advantage of that and, and exploit the economies of learning where in a use case by use case basis, what you learned in the first use case accelerates your value, accelerates your learning, accelerates your time to value on the subsequent use cases. And finally, a play that I actually missed in the blog, but was very well pointed out in the conversation that followed is you need to make sure you establish an enterprise-wide master data management and data governance framework. You want to make sure you establish a common language across the organization. That's one of the powers of master data management. It also, master data management, allows you to start enabling that data mesh concept where you can leave data in place and you can connect to it because you're using conform dimensions or master data management to accelerate the data and analytics monetization. So hopefully this video helps to ex explain the concepts in the blog and why every organization should take a look at this recession as a catalyst to move quickly. You, every organization out there has a wealth of data. Most organizations really don't know what to do with it. Hey, here's seven very simple plays that you can do today to start getting value from your data, to make that data work harder and smarter to drive value. So again, so you don't just survive a recession, that you actually thrive during the recession. Thanks for your time. And I hope you liked the video and the blog as well. Cheers.